Let's begin in any comfortable seated position. And once you find your comfortable seat, close your eyes. And start to turn your attention to how you're feeling in the body. Noticing the sensations that are present. Maybe starting with the most obvious sensations first. Those places where your body's making contact with the mat or the props that you might be sitting on. And then start to notice your breathing. Not doing anything at the moment to shape or control your breath. Now let's start to add a little bit of depth to the inhalation. Start to slow down each exhalation. So you can, as you inhale, if you can feel the low ribs expand, carrying the inhalation all the way up, so that your collarbones raise just slightly at the top of each inhalation. And then on the exhalation, allowing all the air out of the lungs. Maybe beginning to add that slight ujjayi pranayama, a slight constriction at the back of your throat so that you can hear the air passing audibly in and out through your throat as you breathe. together in prayer or position, Anjali Mudra at the level of your heart. Let's take a moment to consider your sankalpa or your intention for the practice today. Remember that sankalpa or intention has two parts. The first part is what you need from your practice today to help bring you into harmony. It's your short-term intention. Take a moment to consider that now. And now take a moment to consider your longer term intention, where you hope the practice will take you in the long run. This is sometimes translated as your heart's desire. And if it's helpful for you, consider formulating it in a short declarative sentence in the present tense. I am free. I am loving kindness. I am healthy, whole, and happy. And maybe just repeat it to yourself a few times trusting that it's in the process of becoming true. Trusting that this practice will serve your highest intention. Let's seal that intention and set the context for what follows by chanting Hari Om three times.
Release your hands down to your lap. Let's come forward onto hands and knees. We'll start by finding a neutral tabletop position with your wrists below your shoulders, your knees below your hips. Tops of your feet can be flat on the mat or you can curl your toes under to start. And we'll start today by just taking a few rounds of free movement. So start to move your body in any way that feels useful to you. As you can see, I'm making some circles with my hips. And then if you're moving in a one direction, we start to change the movement a little bit. And pay attention as you move to what you're feeling in your body. Notice those spots, aches, achy spots, spots where you feel tight, places where you feel open. Just observing as you breathe in. Coming back to neutral, take your knees a little bit wider than your hips, big toes come to touch. We'll lower down for child's pose. Release your forehead down onto the mat. And let your hips be heavy down by your heels or you can leave your hips high as you breathe. And make sure that you're resting your forehead down onto something. So if it's not the mat, you can slide a block or your hands underneath your forehead. And then shake the head no a few times, massaging that spot between your eyebrows down on whatever surface your forehead is resting on. All right, then on your next inhalation, we'll come back to neutral shoulders, come over the wrists again. We'll take a few rounds of cat-cow. So on your inhalation, tip your tailbone, lift the crown of your head, let your belly drop, and then on your exhalation, round your back, Feel your hands and your knees moving away from each other. And keep moving this way with your breath. Let's curl your toes under and press yourself back to downward facing dog. And as you come into this first downward facing dog of the day, feel free to pedal out your hips, pedal out your feet, shift your hips side to side. And continue breathing. Then at the bottom of your exhalation, walk your feet up towards your hands. We'll take a few breaths in a bent knee forward fold. Take your feet about as wide as your hips. Bend your knees a lot so that you feel your low ribs and your belly making good contact with your spine. This will help to, or with your thighs. This will help to ensure that you can safely traction out your spine as you breathe. Let's go halfway up, find your half lift, find that flat back, extend through the crown of your head, draw your shoulder blades together, and reach your tailbone toward the wall behind you. And on your next exhalation, forward fold, bending the knees again, and then on your inhalation, let's come all the way up to standing, reach up for the ceiling, Turn your palms to face one another, roll your pinkies in just slightly, lift your chest and drop your shoulders down away from your ears as you breathe. All right, on your exhalation, let's go ahead and drop both hands down by your side. And then on your next inhalation, lift your chest, turn your palms up toward the ceiling and roll your elbows toward the front of the room. See if you can get that feeling of lifting your chest more than your chin. Arching your back, grounding down through both feet, and bending your knees slightly. Keep rolling your elbows forward from your shoulders, creating that external rotation in your shoulders. And then on your next exhalation, use the strength of your low belly 
to draw yourself down and forward, bending your knees a lot, and reaching your arms behind the back of your legs, rounding the spine. So tuck the chin. Take a few breaths here. On your next inhalation, come all the way back up, lift the chest, turn the palms up toward the ceiling, and then on your exhalation, bend your knees even more, round your back, draw the low belly in, tuck the chin. Let's keep moving this way with your own breath. After your next exhalation, go ahead and release both of your hands down toward the floor. Take a few breaths here in Uttanasana. And then bending your left knee, bring your right hand down underneath your chin. And we'll take a twist to your left. So left leg's extended, right knee is bent. Breathing in. And then on your exhalation, let's go ahead and switch to the other side. So bend through your left knee, straighten through your right leg, and bring your right hand up to your sacrum, pressing down through your left hand. And then on your next exhalation, let's go ahead and release both hands down to the floor. Inhale, come all the way up, reach up for the ceiling. Exhale, mountain. Let's put all of that together. We'll do a few rounds of a modified Ardha Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, lift the chest, turn your palms, roll your elbows toward the front of the room and arch your back. Exhale, bend your knees, draw your low belly in, round your spine, tuck your chin. Inhale, find your half lift, your flat back. And then on your exhalation, lower down into a deep squat. Inhale, come all the way up, reach up for the ceiling, and then on your exhalation, find your mountain pose. All right, let's keep moving like that. Inhale, lift the chest, roll the elbows forward, arch the back. Exhale, bend the knees, draw the low belly in, tuck the chin. Inhale, half lift, find your flat back. Exhale, deep squat. Inhale, rise up, reach for the ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. All right, let's do that again. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, round right the back. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep squat. Inhale, rise up, reach for the ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. All right, last round here. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, bend the knees, round the back. Inhale, half lift. This time when you exhale, step your left foot back. And bring your left knee down to the mat, top of your left foot as well. And use your inhalation to rise up for the low lunge. On your exhalation, bring both hands down behind your low back, press your knuckles back down toward the floor and lift the chest. On your next exhalation, then bring your left hand down to the mat, bring your right hand up to your thigh, spin your fingers in and press down through the heel of your right hand to open up toward the right. If you want to make the twist a little more active, curl your back toes under, lift your knee off the mat. Breathe in here. And on your exhalation, bring your right hand down outside your right foot. Step your back foot up to meet your front foot. Inhale, half lift, find that flat back. Exhale, step back with the right foot. Bring the right knee, top of the right foot down to the mat. Inhale, rise up. 
And then on your exhalation, drop your hands down behind your low back, weave your fingers together, press your knuckles down toward the floor, lift your chest, and breathe. Exhalation. And bring your right hand down to the mat. Bring your left hand to the top of your thigh. Spend your fingers in. Press down through the heel of your hand and use that action to help you stack your left shoulder over your right. If you curl your toes under on the other side, you want to give it a try here. Go ahead. Bring your left hand down outside of your left foot. Step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach for the ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. down to the mat and step yourself back into plank pose. We'll take a few breaths here. Really charge up your legs. Draw the low belly in. And stand out through the spine as you breathe. And then on your next exhalation, let's lower all the way down to the mat with control, either in plank or knees chest, chin. On your next inhalation, lift the head, lift the chest, and then on the exhalation, lower back down. And continue moving in this way, trying to use the strength of the back body rather than the strength of the arms to lift yourself up and control your movement back down. Next time you inhale, let's stay lifted in the chest. Pick up your feet and your knees as well. And if you want to hover your hands over the mat, you can go ahead, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Try to keep the back of your neck long. And then maybe reaching your hands behind your sacrum, weave your palms together. Press your knuckles down toward your heel. Feel your shoulders roll from your front body onto your back body and your shoulder blades squeeze together. Exhale, lower down. Bring both palms down to the mat underneath your shoulders. And on your next exhalation, extend your right arm straight out to the side and roll to the right. And then use your inhalation to bring yourself back to center. Draw your right arm in. On your exhalation, extend your left arm straight out to the side. And then inhale back to center. And keep moving this way with your own breath. Again, feel free to move a little faster, a little slower. Just make sure that you're moving slowly enough that you give yourself time to work into your edge as you roll to one side. And also make sure you're not rushing through the inhalations when you come back to center. Once you've completed an equal number on both sides, let's bring both forearms down onto the mat, elbows underneath the shoulders, and then bend through your knees and make some circles with your feet. Switch directions.
to neutral. We'll slow her down, slide your palms back down onto the mat, heels of the hands down by the low ribs. On your exhalation, press yourself back up through neutral table and curl your toes under for downward facing dog. Bottom of your next exhalation, pause the breath and step or hop the feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach for the ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. And we're going to move through a modified Surya Namaskara A again. Remember, if anything doesn't feel right or you're not comfortable with the vinyasas, just skip it. Come down, take a round of cat cow on your hands and knees, or maybe just press back to down your face and dog. Right. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Pinch at the hips, bend your knees. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step your right foot back. Bring your right knee down to the mat. And on your inhalation, rise up. Exhale, bring both hands back down to the mat and step back into plank. Inhale your shoulders over your wrists and then on your exhalation, lower down in plank or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra or up dog, whatever feels better on the low back. Exhale, downward facing dog. At the bottom of your next exhalation, step your right foot forward. Drop your back knee down to the mat. Inhale. Low lunge. Exhale. Bring both hands down to the mat. Step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale. Half lift. Exhale. Fold. Inhale. Rise all the way up. Reach for the ceiling. Exhale. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step your right foot back. Right knee, top of the right foot, come down to the mat. Inhale, rise up, low lunge. Exhale, bring both hands back down to the mat. Step back into plank. Inhale, the shoulders over the wrist. Exhale, lower down with control. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. At the bottom of your next exhalation, pause the breath and step your left foot inside your left thumb. Drop your back knee down to the mat. Inhale, rise up, low lunge. Exhale, both hands down to the mat. Step your back foot up to meet your front foot. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach for the seat. Exhale, mountain pose. All right, so opening up into a wide-legged stance. Don't take your widest wide-legged stance. Turn your toes out at about a 45 degree angle. With the space between your feet about one of your own leg lengths apart. And then bend your knees and you're going to let your hands come to rest on your thighs and let the weight come into your arms. Keep your arms straight. You can see you can allow your shoulders to kind of shut up by yours and really release your low belly. We're going to practice a few external breath retentions. So I'm going to lift my shirt so you can see what I'm doing as I create Uyana Bandha with my belly. Now remember this practice should be safe for most people but if you are pregnant or if you've recently had abdominal surgery, you should go ahead and skip this and just breathe. All right. So I'm going to exhale all the air out. I'm going to engage my pelvic floor, tuck my chin, I'm going to draw my low belly in and up, hold the air out for a few seconds, and when I feel like I want to breathe again, I'm going to let the belly go and let the air come back in. You don't want to hold the air out so long that you feel like you're going to gasp on the inhale. Repeat this a few more times, taking a resting breath in between. And if you feel lightheaded, just back off.
once you completed the round that you're currently on. Let's come all the way back up to standing. You can widen out your stance a little bit and then bring your hands together behind your head. And on your exhalation, let's start making a big circle down to your right. And then use your inhalation to bring you back up. A little back bend at the top. And on your next exhalation, start making another circle down to your right. Inhaling back up. And just keep moving this way until you've completed three rounds in the first direction. And once you've completed your third round, switch directions. Once you've completed your third round in the second direction, let's release both arms out to the side. Turn the toes of your right foot to face the short end of your mat and sink down for warrior two. Find the outer edges of both feet. Eye gaze is soft up the middle finger of the right hand. Continue breathing. And then crossing your right arm over your left arm. Let's either stay here grabbing for the opposite shoulder or maybe move into eagle arms. Breathing here. Inhaling back up. Let's find your way out of warrior two. We'll switch to the other side. Turn the toes of your left foot. Sink down through your left knee until your left knee is stacked over your left ankle. Breathe in here. Crossing your left arm over your right. Let's take eagle arms on the other side. Breathe in here. bring both hands to the hips. We'll come back to the first side, so turn your left right toes back to face the short edge of your mat. Keep your chest parallel to the long edge of the mat in front of you. Leave your right hand on your right thigh and your left hand on your left hip. And on your exhalation, let's go ahead and slide down toward triangle pose. And then on your inhalation, come on back up. And we'll just enter and exit into the pose a few times. Each time you exhale, your right hip glides back and your left hip and your left shoulder wrap. And each time you inhale, you come back to standing. On your next exhalation, let's go ahead and release down into the pose. So extend your right arm down somewhere below your right knee. Left arm reaches up for the ceiling. If you can reach for the floor without losing the integrity in the shape, you can go ahead and do so. Continue breathing. Try to keep everything in one plane. And then inhaling back up, switch to the other side. So turn the toes of your left foot to face the short edge of your mat. Right hand comes to your hip, left hand to your thigh. Exhale, left hip glides. Right hip and right shoulder wrap right back. Inhale, back up. And keep moving this way. This time, when you sink down, let's take a few breaths in the pose. Inhale back up, turn your toes to face the long edge of the mat in front of you. Weave your fingers together behind your back. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, forward fold, halfway. And your next 
nice exhalation. Bend through your right knee and shift your hips over to the right. And then inhale back to center. And on your next exhalation, bend through your left knee, shift your hips over to the left. Keep moving this way with your own breath. The next time you come back to your right, let's take a few breaths in this transverse lunge. If you want to release both hands down to the floor or to the blocks, you can go ahead. Really focus on sinking your hips and lifting your heart. Take a lot of weight onto the outer edge of your right foot. You can even press with the inside of your right arm into the inside of your right leg as you breathe. Inhaling back to center, shift to the other side, beginning to adjust your feet. Let's pivot around to find a runner's lunge facing the front of the mat. Step your left foot back to meet your right and either move through a vinyasa on your belly or press yourself back to downward facing dog. a few external breath retention in this shape. So on your next exhalation, exhale all the air out, draw your low belly in, engage your pelvic floor, tuck your chin, hold the air out for a few seconds and when you feel like you want to breathe again, let your belly go first and then let the air come back in through your nose. Take a resting breath if you like and then repeat a few more times. Let's step or hop your feet a little bit wider than your hands and we'll sink down into Malasana, deep squat. So if you find that it's difficult for you to get your heels down onto the ground, turn your feet out a little bit more and or walk your feet a little bit wider. If you find that Malasana is very accessible for you and you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, walk your feet in a little closer and or try to parallel your feet. So your arms should be inside of your knees and we'll just leave the hands grounded for a few breaths as you let your tailbone drop and the crown of your head reach up toward the ceiling. Remember if this shape is inaccessible to you, you can sit on a stack of blocks or maybe come down onto your back and just draw your shins in toward your chest, pulling your knees in toward your armpits to create that deep flexion in your hips. Alright, so from here we're going to add a little bit of mobility work. So lifting your hands up off of the ground. On your next exhalation, see if you can bring your right knee down to the mat. And then inhale back up into your squat. And on your exhalation, spin your left knee down to the mat. And then inhale back into your squat. And do that a few more times. your squat. We're going to move into Bakasana now, crane pose. So if you have crane in your practice, go ahead. If you're new to crane, I recommend trying low crow instead. Press the elbows into the creases of your knees. Squeeze your knees onto your elbows. Press your elbows back into your knees. Shift your gaze forward as you take a little weight under your hands. 
Look forward further than you think. And if it feels like you want to pick your feet up off the mat, you can go ahead. Maybe lower back down. Take a few breaths here. And of course, if you want to play around in this shape and you're proficient in curl, you can practice bringing the soles of your feet together, draw your heels up towards your bottom, maybe engage straightening the arms. If you have a tripod headstand in your practice, and you can safely move into an A Salamba, Sheer Shasana, Sheer Shasana 2. You can go ahead and give that a try. Once you've taken five to seven breaths in an expression of the pose that you're working with today, let's go ahead and return back out of the shape and step or hop back into plank pose. If you want to add some connecting movement, you can move through a vinyasa or just press yourself back into downward facing dog. On your next inhalation, shift your shoulders over your wrists, and on your exhalation, lower down with control. Bringing both hands down on to the mat, elbows underneath your shoulders. We'll repeat space pose. This time, bend through your right knee, reach back for the inside of your right foot with your right hand, and start to use the strength of your arm to draw your right heel toward your outer right hand. If you want to add a shoulder opener, you can practice stacking your elbow over your wrist by spinning your fingers in the same direction as your toes. Yeah, exhaling here. Let's go ahead and release your right foot down. Bring your right arm down to the mat, and bend through your left knee, and we'll reach back for the inside of your left foot. Start to draw your heel forward, maybe spinning the hand. And once you're here, practice drawing the left hip down toward the floor, and continue breathing. Right. Releasing that bind, let's lower all the way down to the mat. We're going to roll now, so make sure you have about a foot or two on either side of your mat. So if you have any props on the side, just go ahead and push those out of your way. Extend your arms out in front of you. We're going to take Kali Mudra with our hands. So weave your fingers together, except for your index finger and your thumb. And then from here, lift up to your chest. Lift your knees and your feet off the mat. Pick your arms off the mat as well. On your next exhalation, we're going to roll to your right and come into Ardha Navasana. Take a couple breaths here in this low boat. And then on your next exhalation, roll all the way across the mat and find Ardha Navasana on the other side. Exhaling back to the first side. And then inhaling back to the second, exhaling back to the second side. All right, exhale back to center. Give it one final lift. And then lower down. Make a pillow with your hands. Shift your hips side to side. And breathe here. Bringing both hands down to the mat, heels of the hands down by the low ribs, curl your toes under, lift your back knees, lift your knees off of the mat, and on your exhalation, press yourself right up into plank and shift your hips back for downward facing dog. And on your next inhalation, lift your right leg up, bend through your knee, stack your hips. And then coming back to center, exhale, step your right foot through, and let's bring both arms into the inside of your right foot. And drop your back knee down toward the mat, your top of your back foot as well. And go ahead and roll into the knife edge of your right foot. 
So you can stay here and breathe. If you want to lower down, you can come down onto your forearms. If you want to find a quad stretch for your left leg, you can open up to the right, bend through your left knee, reach back to the outside of your foot this time, creating that external rotation through your shoulder and draw your heel up toward your body. Wherever you're at, open your heart up toward the ceiling. Continue breathing. On your exhalation, let's go ahead and release the bind. Bring both hands down to the inside of your right foot. And walk your right foot off of your mat so that you've got a 90 degree bend in your knee and your ankle. And your knee is about level with your hips. From here, roll into the knife edge of your left foot, the pinky toe side. Extend your right arm up toward the ceiling. And on your next exhalation, drop your right arm back down towards your right heel, left heel. And then inhale, reach up and over making a big radial shape with your body. Keep moving this way. And then on your next exhalation, bring both hands down to the mat. Step back into downward facing dog. Or if you want to move through a vinyasa on your belly, lower down, inhale up, exhale back. Breathe in. On your next inhalation, lift your left leg high and bend through the knee and stack your hips. Inhaling back to center, square your hips. And on your exhalation, step your left foot through and bring your right knee, the top of your right foot, down to the mat as you shift both hands to the inside of your left foot. And roll onto the knife edge, the pinky toe side of your left foot. And if you want to lower down onto your forearms, you can go ahead. Breathing here. And if you added the quad stretch on the other side, you can go ahead and bend through your right knee. Reach back to the outside of your right foot. And then open your heart up toward the ceiling. Keep pressing down through your right forearm. Keep lifting your heart. See if you can breathe through the back of your heart space. the right foot down to the mat, bring both hands down to the inside of your left foot. Now we walk the left foot off the side of the mat, roll onto the pinky toe side of your right foot, inhale, reach your left arm up, exhale, drop your hips and your left hand down towards your right leg, and then you inhale up and over, keep moving this way. Exhale, bring both hands down to the mat. Step back into your downward facing dog, or maybe move through another vinyasa. At the bottom of your next exhalation, step or hop your feet wider than your hands again. We'll lower down into a squat again. So this time we're going to practice moving out of our squat. We're going to bring both hands over to the right. So you can see my right hand is outside of my right knee and my left hand is more in front of my right foot. You're going to shift your weight forward a little bit onto your hands and then you're going to use your inhalation to pick yourself up and shift yourself over. Then from here, we're going to come back. We'll do two to the other side. And exhale back down into your squat and then inhale. Two back to the right. And 
and then two back to the left. All right, last time here, come back to where we started, back into your deep squat, and then walk your feet together. Grab for your big toes, so bend your knees enough that you can wrap the peace finger and thumb around your big toe and release the crown of your head. Parangustasana. Press your big toe down into your fingers. Release the crown of your head. Feel your outer hips and your tailbone lifting up toward the ceiling. And continue to breathe. Your next inhalation, half lift, and then exhale, lower back down. And just move that way a few more times. All right, the next time you inhale, let's stay lifted. We're going to add a few external breath retentions to this movement. So in your next exhalation, you're going to exhale all the air out, draw your low belly in toward your spine, and then you're going to lower down, holding the breath out, and then inhale, come on back up and release the belly as you do. So exhaling here. Facing the bind, let's bring both hands down to the floor. And then from here, go ahead and step yourself back into plank. Inhale your shoulders over your wrists. Lower down with control. Bend through both knees. And we'll reach back for the outside of your ankles to set up for bow poses. So use the strength of your arms to lift your head and your chest. Use the strength of your legs to kick back into your feet. And raise your feet up towards the ceiling. Trying to keep your knees from splaying apart. Alright, exhale, lower down. Let's bring both palms down to the mat, heels of the hands down by the low ribs. Curl your back toes under. Lift your back knees off the mat. And then on your exhalation, press yourself halfway up into Chaturanga. And then exhale, press yourself back to downward facing dog. All right, from here, let's bring both knees down to the mat. We'll bring our right shin forward so that it's parallel to the short edge of your mat. And then bring your left knee forward so that your left knee is parallel to the long edge of the mat. And I've got, you can see, my knee is about in line with my hip on both sides. And then from here, go ahead and walk your hands behind you as far as you want to go. And lower down toward the ground. And press down through your right hand as if you were trying to take a peek at your left heel behind you. Good. And coming back to center, walk your hands forward. Weave your fingers together behind your head and press your Elbow up toward the ceiling as you breathe. Right, inhaling, 
Let's release that bind. We'll switch to the other side. So bring your left shin parallel to the short edge of your mat in front of you. Your right shin is parallel to the long edge of your mat. And then walk your hands out to your left and start to walk them around behind you until you start to feel that you're in that kind of twisted shape. And then accentuate that by pressing down into your left hand. Let your right shoulder drop a little bit. Take a peek towards your right heel as you breathe. Right. Come back to center. Weave your fingers together behind your hip. Press your left elbow up toward the ceiling, ground down through your outer left hip. Continue breathing. And coming back to center, let's extend both legs out in front of you. Bring the sides of the ball mounts of your big toe together. Create an internal rotation of your thighs to resist the back of your thighs down to the mat. And then from here, sit up nice and tall. Bring your palms down onto the mat. Press down through your palms. Drop your shoulders down away from your ears. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and get nice and long and tall. Keeping that activation through your legs, spreading your toes as you breathe. Exhalation. Let's go ahead and release that. Inhale. Let's sweep both arms up toward the ceiling. Keep your chest lifted. And on your exhalation, hinge at the hips. Draw your low belly in. And forward fold into Paschimottanasana. So you can grab your strap if you like. You can bend through your knees. And once you're here, really think about creating length out of your pelvis. So the aim is not so much to get your chest or your chin or your forehead down to your shins as much as it is to create that feeling of the pelvis becoming a base that the spine can lengthen out of almost like a jet of water shooting out of the front. It's almost like you're leading with your heart toward the front. You've taken a few breaths in this shape. If you want to release down, let your forehead come down. Get a little flexion in the spine. bend through the right knee, bring your right knee out to the side with your heel up close to the base of your body, and then from here turn your left palm over, slide your left hand down along the inside of your left leg, grab your left foot if it's available to you, and then open your heart toward the long edge of your mat. And you can stay here and breathe, you can reach your right arm up behind the back of your head and grab for that little bump on the back of your head if you like. Or you can extend to the outside of your right foot. And the outside of your left foot for continue breathing. Inhale, come on back up. We'll switch to the other side. Right leg extends, left knee bends. Create that 90 degree angle between your legs. If it's not 90 degrees, you don't have to worry about it too much, but that's kind of the way that we're working here. Turn the palm of your right hand up to face the ceiling. Slide your right hand down along the inside of your right leg, maybe binding on the arch of your right foot. Your right elbow is going to drop down inside of your right leg. Open your heart up toward the 
long edge of the left side of your mat. Then bring your hand behind your head, open your elbow up toward the ceiling, or maybe reach for the outside of your right foot as you breathe. Front, one more down onto your back, bring your feet about hip width apart, maybe a little bit wider, mat width apart, and then from here, slide both knees drop over to the right. And then on your inhalation, bring them back to center. And then exhale, both knees over to the left. Inhale back to center. And exhale to the right. Next time you come back to parallel, extend both legs long and let yourself settle down into Shavasana. And as you settle down into this pose, use it for a moment to check in with how you're feeling. And if there's something that you have left to do in your body, something that we didn't get to today that you want to do to round out your practice, you can take the next few minutes to start to work on whatever it is that you like to work on where your body's still nice and warm and open. Or if you want to just take a few more poses or movements to help you find some compensation in your spine and prepare you for your final rest, then go ahead and do so. And if you're ready to move into your Shavasana, take a moment to gather up anything you might need, socks or a blanket or any extra props so that you can allow yourself just to really release into the experience of feeling all the space that you've created in your body. This is the part of the practice where we get a chance to absorb and integrate the work that you've done with your body and your breath and your attention. And there's nothing you need to do to
slowly begin to deepen each inhalation and lengthen each exhalation. And when it feels appropriate for you to do so, you can start to add a little movement back into your fingers and your toes. And then gradually start to add back more movement until you're ready to bend. Bring your knees and roll to one side using the strength of your arm to press yourself back into the seat. moment to set yourself up so that you can maintain a relatively upright neutral spine with ease so if that means adding a little height underneath your hips feel free to do so we're going to uh, practice pranashuti which is a form of mental alternate nostril breathing so to engage with this practice of pranayama just let your hands rest comfortably anywhere down on your leg close your eyes and bringing the tip of your tongue to the juncture where the back of your top teeth meet the roof of your mouth. Just lightly rest it there. And bring your attention to your breath as it enters and exits at the tip of your nose. to shape or control your breathing. On your next inhalation, bring your attention to the sensations generated by your breath as you inhale through your right nostril. And then on your exhalation, shift your attention to your, the sensations in your left nostril. Staying with the left nostril as you inhale. And shift your attention to your right nostril as you exhale. And just continue breathing in this pattern. Inhaling right. Exhaling left. Inhaling left. Exhaling right. Again, not doing anything to shape or control the breathing. But just shifting your attention from one nostril to the other after each inhalation. Next time you inhale through your right nostril, add a brief internal breath retention at the top of your inhalation, firming the pelvic floor, toning the belly, tucking the chin just slightly as if you were trying to hold the air in your torso. And then when you're ready to release the breath, let your exhalation come on out, shifting your attention to your left nostril as you exhale. And then inhaling left, hold the air in, tone the pelvic floor, lift the belly, tuck the chin. And on your exhalation, 
Just observe the sensations in the right nostril. And continue breathing in this way, having that brief internal breath retention at the top of each inhalation. Next time you exhale through your right nostril, release the breath retentions, release the technique, and bring your palms together in prayer position, Anjali Mudra. Let's take one final moment for the practice of gratitude, bringing into your heart and into your mind those things in your life that you feel grateful for, and see if you can connect with them in such a way that you can start to feel that feeling of gratitude in your is like the fertile soil in which your intention grows. Start to call forth your sankalpa again, your long-term heart's desire, that part of your intention where you'd like to practice to take in the long run. And silently repeat it to yourself again and again, trusting that it's in the process of becoming true. close today by chanting Om Shanti 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 He. Shanti means peace. Inhale. Peace for ourselves, peace for our communities, peace for all beings everywhere. Namaste. Thanks for sharing your practice today. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I hope to see you again soon, whether on the internet or in the real space. Have a good day.